Welcome back to MIS 699. This week I would like to talk to you about semantic web technology. This is a showcase of a particular emerging technology and hopefully we can apply to it some of the concepts that we've learned earlier in the course such as its positioning on the Gartner hype cycle, whether it has crossed the chasm, and how we can make decisions about this technology in terms of adopting it or deferring investment in it. So what is the semantic web? The World Wide Web was proposed by Tim Berners-Lee in the early 1990s. And in the initial version, it was based on a description language for web pages called HTML that contained links to other web pages hosted on servers. At the beginning, web pages contained both the markup for styling the pages, so whether a particular piece of text should be represented as bold or in italics, and uh, the markup for hyperlinks and the content of the text itself. Over time, this evolved. So to date, most web pages that are being built separate the representation, in other words, how the content is being styled or um, graphically rendered, from the content of the web page itself. So we have web pages that contain text, and then we have something called cascading style sheets that specify whether text is red or blue and what size it should be. And these style sheets actually may vary between different browsers or different uh, technologies that you might use to view web pages. Now, if we look at a web page, in particular one on places like Amazon.com, it contains a lot of information that is humanly readable. It might contain, if you look at a book, the name of the author, the title of the book, the ISBN number, the price, how many books are in stock, and so on and so forth. This is all useful if you look at this page as a human being. But if I'm trying to compare book prices from different websites, and I'm trying to write a computer program to do that for me, my computer would have a hard time to identify where the price is on a particular web page. I actually may have to scrape the page, look for a dollar symbol, and infer that the numbers around that symbol may have something to do with price, and that because it's a dollar symbol, it's probably a price in US dollars. So, what to do? The idea behind the semantic web is now to separate out the meaning of things from the way how they are represented. So that if I had a web page about the book and a page about an author, or let's say on the page of the book, some information about the author of the book, that this information about the author could be linked to the fact that this is a person, and if it's a person, then this person has a birth date and has parents, and that this person may have a residency somewhere. So there's additional information about the author, which I may or may not want to display on the particular book page, but which may have been gathered from other pages. So if I wanted to ask the question, where was the author of Alice in Wonderland born? then in immediately um, my computer would be able to infer this information from all the different bits that have been gathered that have been put together. Now, some popular websites already use this technology. So you could ask on Google the question, who is Michelle Obama's husband? Try it out. And you will see that Google will give you a pretty clear text answer. Also. Um, questions such as um, what's, uh, what are the family members of so-and-so can be answered on Google and part of the reason why they can be answered is because of the understanding of what the content of certain web pages mean. So semantic web technology is an approach that allows us to capture meaning and separate it then from representation. So this week we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about some prototype software and open source software that in, uh, exists in this space and what this might mean for the future of data management and data exploration. I look forward to working with you on this, so look forward to the presentations. Thank you very much.